Hi, um, my name is Carlton Cummins, and I'm going to be talking to you about sustainable batteries. Just for context, my, by education, my background is mechanical engineering. Um, I also did a master's in kind of sustainable energy and design. So naturally, I have quite an interest in sustainability. I've worked in energy for a number of years as well, in many forms, from solar electricity installation to electric motorsport. Today, though, I am the CTO for a lithium-ion battery company here in the UK. Now, in terms of what I'm going to talk to you about, my theme suggests I'm going to be talking about sustainable lithium-ion batteries. But before we can actually get into talking about batteries, it's really important we understand why we need to get batteries right. So we're going to talk about energy and how we power our lives. So in terms of energy, Energy is actually one of the key ingredients that determines the survival and development of any civilization. And interestingly, as a whole, we are at an inflection point where we are trying to transition from one form of energy, fossil fuel, to something a little cleaner and more abundant, which is renewable energy, particularly if we want to continue living here on the Earth. So naturally, you could imagine lots of governments and organizations are having lots of conversations, planning and organizing, strategizing how we transition from fossil fuel to something that is renewable and more abundant. But what about the cost? Well, here's the thing. The game has changed. And since 2019, wind and solar is the cheapest form of energy, not renewable energy the cheapest form of energy in three quarters of the world. As a result, a lot of new energy infrastructure is emerging to take advantage of this fact. Lithium ion batteries in particular are a key component to this new energy infrastructure, fundamentally because they help us to stretch that solar energy into the night and also capture the wind energy for when we need to use it. Basically, matching the natural supply with our human demand. So one of the key things to note when we talk about energy is that switching to renewable energy is no longer just the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do. Now, bringing things home, a key thing to note is that when we transition away from fossil fuels, we actually are going to be needing to use more electricity to do our water heating as well as space heating, along with all the other appliances that we have, as well as the inevitable electric vehicle that will be parked at the front of the house. Now, the change to electricity or the electric change in the UK is often focused on electric vehicles, but actually there's a change of a lot of fundamental components in our lives that are also going electric, from gas heaters to electric water heaters and from gas, from gas boilers to heat pumps. A lot of things are transitioning to electric. And the reason why this is important on a home level is that the way our, house, the way our houses were made, they weren't actually wired to handle this new strain or this new demand of electricity. I mean, they generally barely manage if we install a new electric doorbell and, and change to a new, um, a new microwave. So the challenge that we tend to have is that we, we have a challenge when it comes to the actual amount of energy we're going to be using in the future and the way our houses were wired. As a result, batteries will also play a critical role in the home, not just to help you capture and store that renewable energy, but also to help power some of these additional new appliances to give your home that extra energy oomph but also they will serve a critical role as a backup for when things do go wrong. Basically, yes, your home will need a power bank. And to set the scene with all this, the reason why this becomes a challenge is that lithium ion batteries, one, they're really expensive to buy up front, and two, they are a significant expense as well when you need to waste manage them. And it's the waste management that's actually a really big issue. Fundamentally, lithium-ion batteries were never conceptualized to be used 
for long-term applications and at a large scale. They were developed to be used for consumer electronics, cell phones, camcorders, laptops. And one of the key things with these devices is that we actually have a short-term relationship with them. We upgrade our phones every two to three years. We change our laptops ever so often. It's, it's not really a long-term relationship. So then using that technology for longer applications like transportation as well as homes can be a challenge. As a result, we have a really big issue when it comes to scaling up the use of lithium-ion batteries when it comes to global powering of homes and businesses. I really wanted to dig a little bit into the challenge when it comes to actually doing the doing of waste management of a lithium-ion battery. Now, going into battery 101, a lithium-ion battery pack fundamentally is comprised of hundreds of cells. Think of them like AA batteries. They do come in different shapes and sizes, but it's often comprised of a series of components. But we normally think about it as just one bank or just a black box. Inside that, though, are several different components. Now, an example is electric vehicles. That will easily comprise of 500 or more of cells of this size or larger. In this image here, this is actually a battery pack made for a Tesla Model 3. And the big challenge with the way these batteries are, are uh, the challenge with these batteries when it comes to waste management comes down to the way they were made. Because we like things quickly, these batteries are actually been manufactured using a lot of quick and easy methods. Uh, permanent assembly techniques is what it's often called, which is engineering speak for industrial gaffer tape, glues, and welding. And the big challenge with that is that it makes it really difficult if you need to do any work to repair the battery. This is actually an image of the work involved in disassembling a Tesla Model 3 battery if you wanted to get just one of the 5,000 cells out of the pack. Just for context, any electrical device you need to use a chisel and a hammer to take it apart is not safe. <laughs> Basically. So just from a repair point of view, it's really hard. These, and the Tesla Model 3, for example, that actually uses not one, but two types of glues to hold it together. So there's the light blue glue there, and then there's a gray glue that's also used to hold it together along an, an, another axis. And these glues and welds also affect the recycling because it makes it more expensive and more complex to actually recover the raw materials inside of these batteries. And given the geopolitical challenges when it comes to raw materials to date, batteries that are really hard to break down and get those materials back are a massive problem. So we really do need to transition the way we approach the design and building of batteries if we want them to play a large scale in delivering this renewable energy to power our lives. Now, we spoke a lot about energy and batteries and homes and cars, and it is a complex problem because there are lots of things involved. But fundamentally, the solution to make batteries more sustainable is quite simple. We need to transition batteries from something that was made to behave like a consumable. You buy it, you use it, and then you dispose it to something that works more like a system. There's an ecosystem around the product. And this, this transition fundamentally comprises of three key things. One, we need batteries that are actually designed to be maintained so that we can actually extract more value from them over time. Think of it like a car. If you bought a car where they riveted the wheels to the car, it's really hard to extract as much value when the weakest link in the car, the tires, is extremely difficult to remove. So batteries that are actually designed to actually be maintained over time are really important. Naturally, support, uh, support software also becomes a really important element of this system when we think about batteries differently. Software to tell us when we need to maintain the battery and what needs to be maintained. That is the direction and the value of intelligent software. You don't need to guess where. You don't need to just 
bring the battery to the maintenance shop when something goes wrong. It can tell you, and that's the future that we need to transition to. And then the third thing we need in this transition for more sustainable batteries is service hubs. Just as we need a global supply chain to make batteries, we also need to localize the support. If you think about it with your car, you don't call Toyota when you need to get your car fixed. There is someone within your community, someone within your city that has the skills and ability to do the maintenance and support. And this concept may seem a little bit strange for batteries, but actually this model exists today. When you think about the dealership model for cars, or even the service plan that comes with your boiler, it all fundamentally springs from the idea of a product that was designed with maintenance and long-scale serviceability in mind. So, I would love to talk and really dig into how you make a battery more serviceable and sustainable. That is my bread and butter, given that I am a CTO for a battery company. But I'm going to save that talk for another time. I really want to capture you with the why batteries being sustainable are fundamentally important for where we're going and why we're likely to go in that trajectory. Thank you. But if you do want to have a bit more of the conversation, you can reach me on my Twitter or my LinkedIn handles.